Well, hello there. My name is Mark Miles, and I love helping trainers, presenters, workshop facilitators really take their results to the next level. And in today's video, we're going to go a little bit niche. We're going to be a little bit niche. And here's what I know. Whenever you're running a workshop, whenever you are facilitating change within a training room or training session or even presentation, whatever you want to call them, there is one skill that you have to get very, very, very good at. And that is the skill of giving feedback to your audiences and your audience participants after they've done something, so to speak. And if I get one criticism on this channel, typically the biggest criticism is, Mark, you give away too much information. Mark, it's a little bit how-to. It's a little bit more, it's a little, little bit overly exactly what you should do. Now, I don't understand why that's necessarily a bad thing. And I would have to say that the purpose of this channel is to exactly tell you exactly the magic that you can follow in order to get great results. And here's the thing, folks, human nature, the, the videos that I get the most clicks on are the ones that are actually the, you know, controversial topics or the, you know, a little bit out there topics. But sadly, it's the how-to that actually makes the most difference, right? So if you're following along on this channel, you would know for a fact that I don't hold anything back. I really want to reveal everything so you get the results that you're really looking for as a trainer, presenter, workshop facilitator, coach, whatever you want to call yourself, right? But this channel is all about hardcore results and finding out what works, right? So here's the deal. When you're giving feedback to people after maybe they've just done a presentation, maybe they've come along and you're a public speaking trainer, maybe they've come along to your leadership training and they've just done a walk play or a practical activity, you've got to give them some feedback. Maybe you're another type of trainer and you've got them to do something else but you've got to give them feedback. Maybe they've just done a task and you've just watched them do something. You go and give them some feedback. But how you give the feedback is critically important because after a presentation, maybe they just have done a five minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, 50 minute, you know, one hour presentation, whatever it is, right? What we need to appreciate is that in that moment, when you're giving the feedback, you can literally make or break someone. You can literally make or destroy someone's self-confidence and their view around how they've just gone and around their view of how they could go into the future, right? So we need to be very respectful of the position that you are in as the feedback giver and also the feedback receiver. And if you ever want to look into the science of um, giving and receiving feedback, check out a book called Thanks for the Feedback. Um, it was written by some Harvard lecturers, educators, and it's called Thanks for the Feedback. Amazing book. Highly recommend you check it out. Right? But here's the thing. We need to appreciate that how someone receives the feedback will really determine how they go on their next performance. So if you don't deliver your feedback well, then they can lose confidence really quickly and they can stew on the feedback. They can end up not liking you as a trainer. They can end up hating the course. They can end up being, you know, super critical of themselves. All these things can flow out if you don't actually deliver feedback in a way that really empowers the person and it all and gives them some strategies to go forward. At the same time, acknowledges the effort that they have put in, right? So let's dive into it. How do we actually give feedback, right? So let's imagine that somebody has just delivered a one hour presentation, whatever it is, right? What you want to do as a trainer is then pick some people in the audience and ask them the question, okay? So Bill, what is one thing that you love about Ted's presentation? Bill and Ted, right? So what is something that you love about Ted's presentation? What did you do really well? What stood out to you, all right? And get the audience member to claim or share or describe what's one thing the presenter did really well. Then you want to pick someone else in your audience and say, what else did you notice that the presenter did really, really well? Then pick one other person and share, all right? What's one thing that the TED, the presenter, did really, really well? All right, TED Talks, right? So you want to gather great positive feedback. And ideally, tell the presenter that just presented 
to actually write down their positive points, right? Because that's going to solidify in their own mind what to keep doing and what they're doing really well. And acknowledge the wins, bring them to life. And also, this is a teaching moment for you as a trainer to really go, yeah, I loved how you did that. And, you know, I hope other people in the audience noticed how, you know, Ted did X, Y, Z. That was fantastic, right? Then what we want to do is now let's have a direct conversation with Ted and we want to give our expert feedback, right? But we need to appreciate that Ted is in a very vulnerable position right now because Ted is about to receive feedback from you, the expert. And, you know, this could be in any context at all, you know, the leadership conversation, maybe they've just practiced doing that. doesn't have to be public speaking, right? Now we're going to give Ted some feedback. But before we do it, we want to set it up so that Ted feels great, all right? And we want to set it up so that Ted feels like his performance was pretty good, but it could be even better. At the same time, empower him with new strategies, right? So how do we do this? Ted, you've just done a presentation there. Ted, in your own mind, what are you really happy about with what you've just done? And we're going to wait, and what's going to happen is Ted is in his mind, he's automatically going to sort for the negative. He's going to go, oh, yeah, I ran out of time. Oh, stop. Ted, um, let me just ask you the question again. Ted, what are you really happy about with what you've just done? And Ted goes, oh, the time. No, Ted, what are you really happy about? And the reason that we do this is that we want to interrupt his thought pattern because automatically he's going to go towards the negative, right? We need to realign his self-reflection to go, all right, cool, I'm going to acknowledge what I did well. So eventually he'll go, oh, yeah, well, I'm happy that my video worked or I'm happy that my slides um, connected with the audience or I'm happy that, you know, people said that they understood the content, right? And then they're going to describe one or two things. You definitely want to acknowledge what they've just said and say, yes, absolutely. Totally agree with that. Yep, that. Yep, absolutely that. Yeah, really well done, right? And you want to exemplify or magnify what they really did that even you agree with, right? Now, next question you want to ask is the springboard. Next question is, all right, so Ted, um, one question I love to always ask myself after every presentation, knowing that no presentation is ever going to be perfect, is I like to ask myself, if I ever did that presentation one more time, what's one thing I might do differently? Because I know for a fact there's many, many things that I probably want to change, but ultimately going forward, my brain can only focus on one thing, right, and one change. So, Ted, if you ever did that session again, what's one thing you would do differently? And Ted's probably going to go, oh, yeah, I probably rushed through this part. Or, yeah, that joke probably didn't really work out. Or that my self-intro, yeah, I probably didn't say this or that. Or, yeah, my clothes at the end, I probably didn't get enough people. I probably didn't describe the call to action clear enough. And as a result, didn't make enough sense, right? Could be anything at all. But Ted's going to say, Yep, if I ever did that session again, I would change this or I would do that differently, right? And you go, awesome. That you probably don't say that, but right. You go, Ted, yep, fair enough. Fair enough, right? Now, Ted, when I give feedback, I actually don't look at a presentation and consider a bad. I actually consider all presentations good. And would it be okay if I just gave you some tips on how you can make your presentation? even better going forward. Would that be okay, Ted? And Ted's probably going to, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Awesome. Well, Ted, um, I'd just love to share with you a couple of tools, some tactics, and even some shortcuts on how you can make the session go even better next time if you ever deliver the session again. Hopefully that will be okay with you. So, Ted, one thing I noticed was um, probably... One thing that you really wanted to create was a lot of engagement. Was that the case? Yeah, awesome. And Ted, one thing, one other thing I noticed that um, you probably wanted to um, do really well was the time management side of things. Was, it, was that the case? Yeah. And probably another thing that you were really conscious of was the level of experience in the room. Right? Was that the case? Yeah, awesome. Well, one thing I noticed that um, you could do to make the engagement even better would be 
mechanics. Does that kind of make sense? So when you're doing this, you can actually ask this and that's going to lead to better engagement. Does that make sense? Awesome. So grab a pen and write that down, right? So strategy one for engagement is blah, blah. Awesome. So next thing with time management, uh, because I did notice at X point X, this was happening for you. So a way to get around that is blah. So go ahead, grab a pen and write down that second one that we mentioned there about time management. And hopefully other people in the audience, you're writing these down as well there, right? Now, point number three was blah. And one strategy or tool to get around that is X. Everybody make sure you capture that one as well, because I noticed other people were struggling on that as well. There. So let's just recap, Chet. So we talked about the key areas of this, this, and this. And the three strategies to really overcome or nail those things were this, this, and this. Ted, do those and do those strategies kind of make sense there? Are they helpful for you? And Ted's going to go, yeah, that makes sense. I, I want to possibly try those out going forward. Sure. And then what you can do is say, everyone, let's give Ted another thunderous round of applause. Yeah. Good job, Ted. Now, the thing is, folks, I have um, been to... I, I can't even count anymore how many public speaking events I've been to, how many trainings I have gone to as an attendee, and how many public speaking events I've gone to as a facilitator and, you know, run workshops and, yeah, pretty much transform lives. But here's the deal. You can set up an amazing activity, but if you, if you fumble or do feedback segments in a very poor way, you can end up destroying the entire vibe of your training session. And if you implement what I've just gone through in the sequence that I've gone through, and you really make the feedback section a memorable teaching moment for your audience member, the person to present it, and also bring in other people in the room and say, oh, can um, do other people see value in that feedback? Is that something you guys can also be using going forward, right? If you bring them into it, then they're going to feel valued and they're going to experience benefits from every aspect of your workshop there, right? So coming back, no matter what type of workshop you're running, you know, if it's leadership, sales, whatever it is, there's going to be a segment where you are giving feedback to your audience members, right? Really value the segment and really start to think about how can I honor and magnify the performance that this person just give them and also give them some tools and tactics that they could use to enhance their performance, but they are willing and open to listen to at the same time, right? Because here's the thing, feedback without a suggestion is an insult. I'll say it again. Feedback without a suggestion or a new strategy is an insult. Because... <laughs> That's a bit of a weird thing to say. But if you walk up to someone and say, yeah, I don't like your shoes, well, the person's going to go, well, what's wrong with my shoes? And how else well should I be wearing my shoes and what kind of shoes would be better is what comes up in the mind of the receiver, right? So if you walk up to someone and say, oh, your presentation, yeah, I didn't like your tonality. Immediately, the listener's going, oh, well, what specifically didn't you like about my tonality? What was wrong about it? And, you know, how is it meant to be? And if you don't actually address those three things, then the receiver is like, well, F you. I don't want just negative comments. I want to know what specifically was wrong about it and how can I make it even better? So if you have a feedback segment in your workshops, make sure that it is empowering for the person receiving it and it's delivered in a way that the person goes, wow, I can use that and also buy into it at the same time, right? So anyway, I know it's a bit of a niche topic, but it is so critical as a trainer, facilitator, influencer in a training room to get this right. And if you don't, you're going to have crushed confidence and people are going to walk away from the training experience, training environment going, well, I didn't really like that. Or who the hell was that person be giving me that feedback? Or ouch, 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 or no, I just give up, it's all too hard. Awesome, folks, hope you got some value from the video. As always, like, comment, share, let's get this message out there, and let's make our feedback segments as enriching and empowering as they can be for 
every learner that we ever come across. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.